What up, my friends? How you doing? Have you done the math? Did you figure out what the title means? Anyways, anyways, first things first, uh, I put out a video on this channel today, and I already live streamed earlier, and YouTube is particular about how many notifications I'll send out, so I definitely need to go ahead and uh, share the link first, right? Gotta head on over to the Discord and share the live stream link, cause yeah. YouTube's notification system limits you to two things a day that they'll notify people about, and then after that, it gets more dicey. All right, there we go. That's good. Switch the chat over, that's good, perfect. All right, what's up, Gossett, Ned, Jess, Kenziki, Stormtrooper, 104, Millmaster, Joe, Potts, John, Old World, Felonius T, Junglum, Bow Falcon, Jess, Jerome, Error, Yamagoro. What's going on, my friends? Yesterday I tried the grape Kool Aid. Today I got cherry. Nope, not cherry. I wouldn't buy cherry. Strawberry. I got strawberry. Doesn't taste like a strawberry. They don't taste that. All these, all these fake fruits don't taste anything like they're supposed to. But that's fine. I don't know if I actually would want it to taste like strawberry. What up, every day? How you doing? Both red. It's the same flavor. Pretty much the same difference. Do I see this? You see this? You know what this is? This is the Necron Commander deck. So I was like, we're gonna open the Necron Commander deck. And that's why it's called Necronomicon minus the Omicron. Because you are left with Necron. Necron! Oh, beat it, Phyrexia. We got different metallic horrors to deal with today. Get on up out of here. Get the fuck out of here, Phyrexia. Because today, it's all about Necrons. Necrogs. What up, Sum? How you doing? Hello, BT. How it be? Also, I want to know why the box is so big. Is the box so big because it's just trying to make you think there's more in here? Does it just have, like, the other ones that were this big had, like, plane chase in them, right? So, why is the, why is the box this big? Jess, you were going up the stairs with your hands in your pockets and you tripped and fell on your face. <laughs> One of the funniest things I've ever seen in my whole life was a guy tripping and falling and rolling all the way down a hill. We were, this was when I was in Newfoundland and we were roaming as a gang of ne'er-do-wells and we went to steal gooseberries from, uh, from this one guy's property. A buddy fell down the hill and I laughed about it for hours, man, like hours. I laughed so hard at the side of the road that my sides hurt. And then when I got home later the day, I'm brushing my teeth, I'm still laughing about it. Still laughing about it. What up, Beezles? How you doing? Ah. See, I think there's just a commander deck in here, isn't there? Speedwagon says, my custom Ghostbusters Pioneer deck came in from Etsy today. It's all about making spirit tokens and sacking them to smothering abomination. Bro, that's dope. You know what, man? You know what? Uh, oh, I don't know exactly where they are. Never mind. I was playing cube today with my buddy and there's a bunch of proxies that people have sent me that I put into the cube finally. So there's like a Tyler Durden version of Garuk Wildspeaker. There's Dam and it's got Ice Cube and Chris Tucker leaning and stuff. And we just had a lot of fun with the stuff. Like it didn't, it didn't even matter. Those, those goopy looking cards didn't bother either of us. It was just fun. So... I'm way more open to all varieties of proxies now. And I'm mixing proxies and real magic cards. Obviously, I'd rather have the real deal than a proxy. But I'm absolutely down to put custom proxies in my cube. Somebody sent me a gorgeous foil Elspeth that is uh, done. They took the Saga artwork that has Elspeth in like kind of a mosaic, not stained glass, but like a mosaic looking really cool. And... They put that as the artwork, and it looks awesome. Also, I got to play with the Dungeon Master. You know the Planeswalker, the Dungeon Master? 
I got to use him. Today was an awesome day of a speed wagon rope. I, I started too early. I started too late on the board. So your your name's kind of tripping. <laughs> oh, it was a lot of fun playing today, bro. And the proxies that I put into my cube, the abyss and all this other stuff. We had an hour long game that went back and forth, right? Like with so much craziness. So I'm 100% on board for more proxy action. What up, Zeria? How you doing? Uh, old world, should you get into Pioneer if you think it's going to make you happy, bro? Absolutely. Shelton, did you miss anything? Guess what we're doing tonight, buddy. Guess what we're doing tonight. <laughs> Phyrexia says, Trazen says, don't let it good be the enemy of the perfect when collecting. There you go. There you go. Uh, Dark Knight, actually, you're right. A bunch of the fakes just look straight up better than regular magic cards now. So, is what it is, right? Is what it is. But yeah, man, just the, like, all the different, like, you can just get customs made with whatever that whatever you want on it. It's, it's like whatever craziness. You can modify stuff. It's fun. It's fun. I like it. Anyways tearing into a box just like I did with your mama last night <laughs> all right let's see what we got in here let's see what we got in here fixer what is this I got a box full of Oroch son Ned's dumb question when you say play cube do you like draft sealed from the collection of cards uh, is it its own format? It is its own format. No, you don't draft from it. You just play off of it. And Ned, if you haven't watched the video yet, you're robbing yourself. Cube is the best format Magic has ever had, Magic will ever have, and it spreads like a virus. Like, for real. Once you play the cube, you're like, what? So, yeah, you want to build your own, or at least always have access to one. It's the best, bro. It's the best. It's awesome. I love it. All right. So, it looks like it is just, uh, you got the deck box and stuff. It's all slotted off to one side. So, it is just the deck. They just did a big fat box for the hell of it. Let's get the flaps all ready. Yeah, cubes are the absolute best, bro. Best way to play Magic, 100%. That's actually what we're doing here. I'm cracking this specifically to find cards for my cube, right? That's the entire purpose of going through this. Yeah, cube is the absolute, absolute best. There is no finer, there is no finer way to play Magic, and I had so much fun playing it today. Let's switch up the angles. And let's get this. Oh, the focus. And let's see if we can make this a bit better here. It seems like it's okay for a second, but then it's like pulling back and uh, messing it up. So, properties. Oh, let's go ahead and mess with the. Let's go ahead and mess with the focus on this a bit and see if we can't make it a little bit more reliable at the very least. How's that look? That looks pretty solid. I got sparklies from the box all over my hand. <laughs> all right, I think that looks pretty solid. Right, you can see the cards pretty well now. Huh? If I bring them up, it makes them a little blurry. But as I take them off the stack, they'll be fine. Okay, that'll work. That'll work. And I'll make it so it won't change. So it'll stay like that. Okay. So, uh, straight out the Silent King. I, we already, I already looked at him before. I already looked at him before. So, this guy is definitely not going into the cube here. Let's let's. He's the face card. We already talked about him in the past. But I guess if you've never seen it... It's four mana for a 3-4 with flying, and uh, whenever he attacks, you mill three cards, and you can put an artifact creature 
or vehicle card from among the cards milled into your hand. This isn't worth milling cards off the cube for, so it's not going to make it in. It's too, it's too narrow, and I imagine a number of the Necron will fall into the same, into the same kind of uh, category. Is there a significance for the trigger ability being named? Actually, this is just wizards going out of their way to try and flavorfully connect parts of the Warhammer world to the magic world. So this is pure flavor to give you an idea of what it is. I actually really like that. I like these flavor words. Then we got Imatech, four mana, three, three. Whenever one or more artifact cards leave your graveyard, create two Necrons. And at the beginning combat in your turn, another target artifact creature you control gets plus two, plus two a menace. Again, this is like super, it might turn out that there's just the stuff in here is too parasitic to make it into the cube. Because if you put in stuff that's too too much of a corner case, it doesn't um, it doesn't translate well, right? Flayed one, three mana, four one lifelink. When flayed one enters the battlefield, mill three cards. Yeah, I mean obviously that's to feed more Necrons into your graveyard, so that's t totally fine, uh, but not cube wise. Hexmark destroyer, six mana, six six. It can't be blocked except by six or more creatures, and it's got unearth of six. Yeah, I'm going to put this in the considered for the cube pile. I have to admit that six mana for a 6-6 six, six can't be blocked except by six or more creatures basically reads as six mana 6-6 six, six unblockable. So I can't say for sure it's going to like make it in, but it's going into the maybe pile, all right? Jess, you thought the Ghostbusters movie was good, but the ending was lame? Fair enough, fair enough. Felonious T, you think this is the best of the 40k decks? Necrons are cool, man. The Necrons, like, gave up their humanity to try and save themselves. Plasmancer. Four mana, three, three flyer. When it enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic swamp, reveal it, put it in your hand. There aren't any basic lands in the cube, so this is not of use. Psychomancer. One black and one, one, one flying. Whenever Psychomancer or another non-token artifact you control is put into graveyard from the battlefield or is put into exile from the battlefield, target opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Again, not going to be strong enough. Not going to be strong enough. Uh, Sautek Immortal, one black and two for two, two flash. And as a battlefield, to plus one, plus one for each creature that died this turn. Well now, well now, at the end of a turn after a big wrath effect, this this has genuine potential, like 100%, 100%. Scorpec Destroyer, four mana, four, two, death touch. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, it gains first strike until end of turn. That's not gonna make the, that's not gonna make the cut. See what I did there? Cause he's got a big blade. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do we got here? Triarch Praetorian. One black and one, two one flyer. When it enters the battlefield from a graveyard, you draw two cards and lose two life? What? It's a two mana, two one that you can unearth for five. And if you bring it back from your graveyard using unearth or other, other res effects, you draw two cards? Yeah. Card draw is super, super strong. Oh, Ball Falcon. Thanks for searching for the cube video. If you guys want to look here, I'm going to pin it actually. I'll pin it up to the top of the chat. If you want uh, to see my video that tells you about the cube, how to build the cube, all of that, there's the link for it. Good job, Bo! Ned, you better watch it now after Bo went to all that work. You better say thank you, Nedward. All right, Night Scythe. I'm Night Scything. Three mana, three one flying. When it enters the battlefield, create a two two Necron. Three mana, three one crew and it makes a 2-2 two, two? okay that goes in the that goes in the potential pile it goes in the potential pile uh no potential pile into defile one black target creature gets minus one minus one until end of turn for each swamp you control what bro bro i feel like this effect should cost like four mana dude this should cost like four mana one black at an instant speed that's crazy what up zircon how you doing Oh, Dread Return, sweet. I don't think there's... I don't think there's a Dread Return in my cube. Hold on, I'm just going to reference the list. I don't think I... I don't think I have a Dread Return. Let's see. Dread? Nope. Uh, dread, Dread, Dread. Dread. No? Okay. 
Well, that's definitely going in the pile of stuff for the cube because Dread Return's great, right? It lets you it lets you bring a creature back from your graveyard four mana. It lets you animate a creature, but you can also sack three creatures to animate a creature. So you can cast this for free by sacking three dudes. That works. That works. Cranial plating. Oh, okay. Yep, definitely. It's a repro we've seen before. This is not good for the cube, though, because it cares about giving a boost based on artifacts, right? Hedron Archive. I already have that in the cube. That's sweet, man. Four mana taps for two. You can also sack it to card draw. Great. Mask of Memory. Oh, is that that old Mirrodin card? Two. Whenever a creature deals combat damage, your player may draw two cards if you do discard a card. Um, yeah, nah. There you got your Sol Ring. I obviously already have one of those in my cube. Baron Moor. Just the land that gets rid of... Uh, oh, no, this is the cycling one. Myriad Landscape. Reliquary Tower. Dark... Oh, cool! Darkness. The Black Fog from Legends. The Black... The Black Fog from Legends. That's cool. By the physical laws of our universe, darkness is merely the absence of light. Necrons can harness the power of other dimensions where darkness is tangible and moldable. Huh. That's cool. Unstable Obelisk. Mm, I mean, seven mana is a lot to get rid of a permanent, but it's also a mana rock. I'm going to put it in the consider pile. Go for the throat. I, I have to already have that in, right? There's got to be a random go for the throat in there. Why did I close it if I was going to do this? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <clears throat> Arcane Signet. There you go. The Necron Signet. Commander Sphere. Mind Stone. Thought Vessel. I actually, got, I drew this today when we were playing. Uh, Wayfarer's Bobble. Desert of the Glorified. Oh, this must be from Amica. Polluted Mire. Vault of Whispers. The Artifact Land. All right, here we go. Now we got some... Now we got some stuff we haven't seen. Anrakir the Traveler. One block and four, four, four. And whenever he attacks, you can cast an artifact spell from your hand to graveyard by paying life equal to its mana cost? What? What? For what? Whenever he attacks, you can cast an artifact spell from your hand or graveyard by paying life instead of mana. That's so dumb. Oh my God, bro. That's absolutely go. You know what? I guess I need absolute pile and maybe pile. You're absolutely going in. You're absolutely going in. Uh, considering, I mean, this feels pretty obviously a great choice. Uh, and then... These ones are in the considering pile. I can't even believe that, bro. You can just cast it by paying life. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, biotransference. This is how you become a Necron, bro. Two black and two enchantment. Creatures you control are artifacts in addition to their other types. The same is true for creatures you control and creatures you own that are in the battlefield. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you lose a life and make a two two. It's like a bitter blossom variant. Every time, every time you cast a creature, you lose a life, but you get a two two body. What? Yeah, yeah. Let's go with that. Chronomancer, one black and one 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 flyer. Uh, one and tap. Sack another artifact. Draw a card. Uh, now it's got on Earth. Okay. Crypt deck. Uh, one black and three, 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 Necron Wizard. Choose another target artifact creature you control, and that creature dies this turn. Return it to the battlefield tapped under your control. No. No. Uh, Illuminor Ceres. One black and two for a three, three. Tap. Sack another creature. Add an amount of black mana equal to the sacked creature's mana value. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. I'll put that in the maybe pile. A Locust Heavy Destroyer. Three black and one, three two flyer. When it enters the battlefield, each player sacks a creature. Wow. And it's got an unearth eight. Strange. I mean, each player having to sack a creature and you having a three two flyer. 
doesn't feel too shabby. That's, yeah, yep, yeah, that's going in. That's going in. That's, that works. That works. Okay. Uh, Lich Guard, one black and two, two, three, pay four mana, sacrifice them, return all legendary creatures from your graveyard to your hand. Yes, please. Okay. Necron Deathmark, five mana, five, three flash. When it enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target creature and target player mills three cards. Yeah. Yeah. Flash creature destruction on a body, bro. And it's, yeah, yeah, this feels great. Necron Overlord, four mana, two, five, X and tap, tap, tap X untapped artifacts you control. Target opponent loses X life. Eh, eh. Out of the tombs, a black and two, enchantment. Beginning your upkeep, put two Aeon counters on it, then mill cards equal to the number of Aeon counters. If you draw a card while your library has no cards in it, Instead, return a creature. Okay, that's useless. Cube always has cards. Royal Warden. Two black and three, three, two. When it enters the battlefield, create two, two, two Necron Warriors, and it's got on Earth. So five mana for a three, two that gives you two, two, twos, and it can come back for four. That's a lot. That's a lot right there. Shard of the Nightbringer. Eight mana, eight, eight. Flying, drain life. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, target opponent loses half their life and you gain that much. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. You don't have to cast it from your hand, bro. You can cheat this into play by casting it other ways. What? Shard of the Void Dragon. Oh, look at that. It's one of those Satans. That's cool, man. Uh, seven mana, seven, seven flying. Whenever it attacks, each point sacks a non-land permanent. And whenever an artifact is put in a grave from the battlefield or is put in exile, put two plus one plus ones on him. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Scorpec Lord, three mana, three, two menace. Other artifact creatures you control get plus one, plus zero and of menace. Eh. Technometer. James P, what's up, bro? How you doing? The Hatcher video you just watched was amazing. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, bro. Technomancer, seven mana, five, one. When it enters the battlefield, mill three cards, then return any number of artifact creature cards with total mana value six or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Hmm. I mean, the whole artifact creature thing it's too hard a condition to fulfill to make this good. Hey, Carly's coming in to say happy Easter weekend, everybody. Happy Easter weekend. I tried to just take a sip of Kool-Aid and all I got was ice chunks. Their name is death. Six mana sorcery. Destroy all non-artifact creatures. Thumbs up, bro. That's a board wipe. Uh, their number is Legion. Four black and X. Create X tapped two two Necrons. Then you gain life equal to the number of artifacts you control. And you can cast it from your graveyard. <laughs> what? Yeah. Tomb Blade. Six mana, five, four flying. When it deals combat damage to a player, that player loses life equal to the number of creatures they control. Unless they sack a creature and it's got on Earth. That feels like it's worth thinking about. They're Trazim. Six mana, four, six, death touch. As long as he's on the battlefield, it has all activated abilities of all artifacts in your grave. What? What? Six mana, four, six, death touch. As long as he's on the battlefield, he has all the activated abilities of all artifacts in your graveyard. Not artifact creatures. Artifacts. Oh, uh, what? That's, that, that's crazy. Bro, that's going in. That's going in. <laughs> Traz and more like crazy and Carly. <laughs> five mana, four, five. And at the beginning of your combat in your turn, choose an opponent. Creatures attacking the last chosen player of menace. This just, this just gives all you guys menace. Huh. 
Yeah, sure. The War in Heaven. Six mana. You draw three cards and lose three life. Mill three cards. Choose up to three target creature cards. Total mana value eight or less in your graveyard. Return each of them to the battlefield with a Necrodermis counter on it. They're artifacts in addition to their other types. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. James P. says in his super chat, remember to watch Mallrats. It's an Easter movie. Yeah. <laughs> Mallrats is a fun movie. That kid is back on the escalator. Wait, what are you saying? It doesn't give your opponent's creatures menace. No, it says creatures attacking the last chosen player. I'm never going to choose myself. It only affects my, my opponent. Can up tap Scarab Squad. Four mana for a 1 1 flyer. When it enters the battlefield, exile target player's graveyard. For each artifact or land card exiled this way, create a 1 1 insect? Bro. Yeah. Uh, can up tech spider, five mana four, four flyer. Whenever another non-token artifact creature vehicle enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Every time another, oh, artifact creature. Okay, never mind. I thought it was any creature. I got, I got excited for a second. That's a shame. All right. Uh, tomb sentinel, four mana four, three vigilance. When it enters the battlefield from a graveyard, exile up to one target non-land permanent. That's so gross. You put it out, and then when they kill it, it hits the graveyard. You can unearth it for seven and smoke something. Or if you have other ways to get it back, of which there's tons of different recursion in the cube. Yup, that's going in. A Wraith. Three mana, two one. Can't be blocked. When it deals combat damage to a player, you can pay three and sack it. If you do, search your library for basic lands. Goodbye. Convergence of Dominion. Three mana. As long as you control your commander. Goodbye. Crypto Thrall. Four mana, three, three, protector. Other artifact creatures you control have hexproof. Eh. Ghost Ark. Four mana, three, three, flying. Whenever Ghost Ark becomes crude, each artifact uh, creature card in your graveyard gains unearth three. I just don't think there's enough artifact creatures to really justify it, unfortunately. Necron Monolith, seven mana, seven, seven, flying indestructible. Whenever it attacks, mill three cards for each creature milled this way, make a two, two Necron, and it's got crew four. It's indestructible. Yeah, yeah, this is, uh, this is going in. This is going in. Resurrection Orb, two mana, equipped creature has lifelink. Whenever a equipped creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Yes. Yes. Any cube card so far? This many, bro. This many automatics and some in considerations. All right. This is going in. Scepter of Eternal Glory. I'm going to sue them because that's the name of my dick. Four casting cost legendary artifact. Tap to add a man of any color. Tap add three man of any one color. Activate only if you control three or more lands with the same name. That won't work. Tomb Fortress. It enters the battlefield tapped. Taps for a black, or pay five mana, exile it, mill four cards, then return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Yo, this just reses a guy from your graveyard? That's awesome. What up, Gianna? Beacon of Unrest. Oh, yeah, this is the uh, shuffle back in, bring back a creature artifact spell. Huh. Living Death. If I didn't already have that in the cube, I'll, I'll, that would go in. Cage Sun. When it comes out, choose a color. Creatures you control the chosen color get plus one, plus one. And whenever land gives you mana that color, it adds an extra one. Cage Sun is fun. Mutilate's based on swamp, so that's not going to do anything for us. Endless Atlas, two to put out, two and tap, draw a card. Oh, this is that Kanza Tarkir thing. Gilded Lotus, already got one in the cube. Mystic Forge, already got one. Sculpting Steel, already got one. All right, and then we got Let's see. Let's. Oh, bro. Wow, they screwed up this swamp. Look at this. This one's got a square corner. See that? Look at how square that corner is. Then we got a, the thick click version of the commander. 
And then, oh, a bunch of Necron, a bunch of Necron tokens for the two twos. So that's cool. It's nice to have the right tokens. One, one insects, two, two Necrons. That's sweet, man. How many cube cards did we get out of this? For the guaranteed pile, we got... Twenty one. Twenty one with six more that will be considered later when I actually go to add these into the cube. Bro, that's dope, man. This is great. All right, so we'll keep the stuff for cube consideration out here on this, and we'll put the remainder of the deck into its box. Break stop, this is the only 40k deck you don't have, but it's so expensive now. Bro, if if you want the Necron Commander deck, just do what I did. Build like a YouTube channel for like six or seven years and wait for somebody to send it to you. That's how I got it. And if I can do it, anybody can. It's a real, like, that's how you avoid the cost of, of buying it, right? You just... You just got to copy what I did. It's simple. Just monkey see, monkey do. Do what this monkey did, bro. <laughs> Fixer. Man, you get, you, you're you like, you're so excited about what you sent. You got me really curious. Uh, I'm going to open it up and it's just going to be a bag of sand. And I'll be like, what is this? What is this? And you'll be like, I've been waiting to tell you this. Pound sand. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of power out stuff in this necron in this necron um deck bro for real break stop you a youtuber no way jose anybody can be a youtuber bro all it takes is just making videos anybody's allowed to do it it don't cost nothing to start it's free it's free and the great thing is if you if you're like worried about failing at it guess what Nobody will see if you fail because that's what failing is at YouTube. Failing at YouTube is nobody watching your videos. Like there's very little in life that you can try and fail at that people won't see you fail at. So it's pretty risk free in that way. I mean, there, there, there are other downsides, but you know, like that's not one of them. That's not one of them. You can do it without worrying. 90, yeah, there's definitely a bunch of other cards that absolutely would have made it into the cube if they weren't already in the cube. Man, yeah, this is dope. This is dope. Some of these are really insane. Like, Trazin is crack-headed crazy, bro. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. Just straight up all the abilities of all of the old <laughs> It's so dumb. And this guy lets you play artifacts from your hand or your graveyard for their mana cost in life. It's insane. Uh, Fixer, how did I explain how I avoid... Oh, customs? Basically, when you mail something, if the declared value of the package equals or exceeds 60 Canadian dollars, then... I, if you get up to a hundred bucks, it's guaranteed automatically customs will like do something to it. If it's 60 bucks or more, they can technically, but a lot of times they don't. So if the stated value is above like 50 American dollars on the package, they're going to look at it and assess customs. So they'll slap on like a 15 to 20% fee and then charge you $10 for telling you about that fee, right? So... The way that that is based is on the declared value of the package. And then the other way we circumvent that is when people send it and it does get hit with customs, they just, I end up paying the custom fees and they pay me back because otherwise it doesn't feel like a gift. It feels like something I bought at a discount. You know what I mean? When it's like, I'm going to give you a gift. It's like, but you got to pay part of the cost of it. That's what it ends up feeling like, even though technically, do you know what I mean? It's that's, I've explained it. That makes sense. Gianna says, I just want to be on the board as Gianna the baller. Well, you know what? We can make that happen right now. We can make that happen right now. So, yeah, they'll just go based off of whatever you say. And, like, 
the really annoying thing about some of it is like people will misunderstand and let's say you mail out a bunch of magic cards you might be thinking i'm sending 80 bucks worth of magic cards but you're not unless you specifically have receipts saying you bought those magic cards at those prices like if the package gets lost in the mail then what happens is they go oh you want to claim insurance you need individual receipts for each of those cards to prove the value of them. That's how they determine value. So they consider loose magic cards to be valueless unless you have an actual, this is exactly what I paid for it. And they don't have some system of sitting there and sorting out what's worth what or whatever. They just have broad categories and they go based on what's declared on the, the package, right? So that's, that's how it's done. What up, Kenny? How you doing? Hope that I'm doing better. I'm I'm doing pretty good today, man. Totally. Yeah, Fixer, that's the way a lot of people go with it. Like, I think the only time that's ever been an issue where I didn't get paid back was when MetaZoo sent me stuff. And before, they would pay me back for the customs. But when I contacted them, it was like, I got hit by customs. They didn't say anything back. And then two days later, the company folded. So I understood why they didn't say anything back. They're like, we're not sending you money. Our company is dead. And it's just like, ah. So yeah, I ended up I ended up losing out, <laughs> losing out on that. But thankfully, people like Bo will come up and tickle my belly when that happens. So like, here you go. Here's a little. He'll pretend to be medicine and be like, here, I'll fix it for you, buddy. <laughs> Levi says custom duties is like receiving a collect call. Jess, you're going to send me edibles in August when you have the money again? It can be weird about how mailing that stuff works. The Probably the best thing to do is to just send me the money that you would use for that. And then I can just pick some up locally because I found some really cost effective, awesome stuff. But you can try it. You can try it. I don't know. I know that when it comes to the actual like plant matter herb that that totally the post office catches that they've caught it a bunch of times and left notes in my packages going yo whoever sent you this tell them to stop sending you herb we took it out we took it out we took your shit we left the rest of the stuff but we took it so if you send it there's a chance the government will just take it i don't know i don't know what the rules are when it comes to that stuff but i definitely know the rules when it comes to the plant version you just can't do it you just can't do it so i don't want you Jess, I know that you have obvious considerable um, restrictions on your fucking, your monetary capacity, as it were, right? So I don't want your resources to get wasted. I don't want anything that you do to get lost. I don't want you to do the equivalent in the mail of walking up the stairs with your hands in your pockets and falling on your face. <laughs> I got, I got news for you, Fixer. It doesn't matter which way you do it. I still would. I still would have to. <laughs> I can't, like, if somebody sends me friends and family PayPal, it's not considered, like, the, the government's not going to look at that and be like, that was from one of your friends or whatever. They're just going to look at it the same way, bro. So there's none of that. And I don't try and play any games with any of that either. I'm just like. All right, Jess, fair enough. Fair enough. The shipping probably costs more than what you buy. Oh, yeah, there's the shipping cost, too, Jess. If you have to pay shipping, it, whatever, man. You know what? What am I doing? It's up to you. You do it however you want. The fact that people want to gift me anything at all is amazing, and I'm super lucky to get to do this. And while I want to help you do it most effectively, I don't want to take away you doing it the way you want to do it. Do you know what I mean? I never really know what the right line to walk is because I don't want to be ignorant. I don't want to be ignorant. Seth, you missed the entire Necron um, kit. You might want to, like Commander deck, you might want to check this out on the stream archive afterwards because went through the whole deck and evaluated it for Cubitude. For Cubitude! Oh, man, the cube action today was insane, guys. You don't even know. Lightning Greaves, Preacher? Oh, put out the Preacher, put the Lightning Greaves on it, take one of you guys, put the Lightning Greaves on that. Oh, let's go! Oh, so awesome. So awesome. Well, if the shipping's free, Jess, then it's all good, buddy. It's all good. Thanks, sir. Bro, shipping to Canada is costly. 
Seth, you were busy watching my latest video on the art scandal. I feel bad for people trying to keep up with all the content I make because I released a video on this channel, have live streamed here twice, and released a video on my other channel today. So that's two videos and two streams, baby. I'm kind of a fucking beast, right? I'm built for this. I'm well suited for this. <laughs> the YouTube game, honestly, it ain't for everybody. It's totally worth trying if you think you might have a good time with it. Don't deny yourself the opportunity at all. But, like, I was, I was fucking born and bred for this shit. You know what I mean? I was born to be an entertainer. I was born to run my mouth and spout my opinions. And I was born to make the souls of weak men quail and quaver in dismay when they hear my thunderous words and fantastic accusations. <laughs> Ten four. I said that Wizards has a response to the art scandal. Yeah? I said that in like videos and shit. I got like a video and a live stream about it. How did you fucking find out that I said that but not see any of it? Did I say that in this stream somehow? Because if you're literally asking me that you saw this on some video or something else and you're coming in here asking me to do a special video for you, I won't do it. I won't do it unless you're going to lick my taint or something to make it worth my while. <laughs> what up, Thompson? How you doing, buddy? My day's been good. I got to play epic, epic cube action today. Like mega epic cube action. I had so much fun playing magic with my buddy. It was great. It was great. Like just really great. And like the proxies totally zormped zorm it up. 10 for the YouTube poll. Oh, the YouTube poll that had a link to the video that would tell you all about it? If you don't care enough to click on that shit, I don't care enough to tell you in the middle of a fucking live stream. You know how you covered this twice and I know where I can go to get it? This is about me. This is about me, so tell me. No. No, that's a not 10 for. Not good, buddy. Right? Like they'd say, 10 for breaker, breaker, good, buddy. No, not 10 for. 11 6, ungood, buddy. Unbreaker, unbreaker. Shh. Right? I ain't doing this shit. Although, you know what, buddy? You're far from the most, like, ridiculous thing that I've seen that way. Somebody literally fucking came to one of my videos. And this is a guy who would come to streams and stuff. And he went, I didn't watch the video, but I, like, scrubbed through it and saw there are these cards in there. And I need you to explain it to me. And I'm like, the video is me. The video is me explaining it. The video is me explaining it. So... I made a video explaining it. So I literally responded to the guy's comment going, oh, here's a video explaining all the cards if you want to know. And just gave him the link to the video he's already on. Do you fucking, like, how how much crack do you have to smoke to think that I'm going to sit there and tell you? What? Like, bro, what is wrong with your brain? What is wrong with your brain? People are ridiculous. Some goofbag complained about that poll that you were on 10 for. Some goofbag complained about the poll. He went, what was it? I don't watch your live streams and I won't. On top of that, only make videos if you have something to say. On top of that, these posts need to stop. No more poll posts because somebody somewhere said that they increase engagement, but they don't. And it's like, so... This post that you're engaging with right now doesn't increase engagement is your first point. The second point is that you're high on crack talking to me like this. Like, you're out of your fucking mind. Are you kidding me? Like, do you honestly think that this is going to get you any other response than click, click, you never get to speak here again? Because that's exactly what you fucking get. That's exactly what you get. Being a dick or being a certain level of entitled, I never need to hear from you again. So yeah, that guy got the, you're perma-muted, son. Are you fucking kidding me? I don't like this, and I don't like this, and it needs to stop. No, the only thing that needs to stop is you. Gone. Like, <laughs> that's nuts. That's nuts. So that was the hardest type of person to learn to ban, where they're not actually insulting me. They're just stating their opinions. But it's like, you know what? I really don't like the way that you've stated your opinion, and I don't like the fucking attitude that you have. So I don't have to put up with this. I don't have to put up with anything from anybody ever. That's it. That's the reality. If you annoy me, I am well within my rights to silence you here forever. You can go anywhere else on the internet you want. But like for real, I read that and I just went, you're, you're saying it doesn't increase engagement while increasing its engagement. I know for a fact it does. 
why are you here flaring out? And I know that underneath it, probably got nothing to do with any of it. Like, at the end of the day, a lot of people who are freaking out are just freaking out because they're having a bad day or whatever else. But I've decided that that's not my problem. If you're not able to comport, <laughs> to, to, to carry yourself properly because you're having a hard time, I don't have to tolerate it. I don't have to put up with you because I'm here to try and entertain a lot of people. I got a lot of balls to juggle and I ain't worrying about yours. That's it. Like, for real. If you're going to be that level of, eh, it's like, you know what? I can mute you. You're never going to come to the live streams. You won't even know they're muted. This guy, this guy will never see that video just from his snarky comment. So he'll continue to go good. Like, he's not the first one either. I don't watch your live streams because they're no good and I don't believe in parasocial relations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, parasocial is nonsense. I'm genuinely connecting with people here and making actual fucking friends. So sorry that that bothers you, but I do things a different way. I ain't trying to get fucking 10,000 people and be like, oh, there's a giant sea of them in the stream and I'm just talking to you generalized. Like whatever man whatever people are gonna people are gonna do whatever they want and i'm just gonna slide it off to the side if i find it obnoxious <sighs> fixer nobody gets the ban hammer for talking too much like there's a very narrow there's a very narrow path that gets you banned it's called being a fucking asshole or somehow not being an asshole but still being incredibly annoying right? Like, do you guys remember how I talked about that, that guy who was dressed like a Power Ranger, who was like, I can't believe you're calling it Mark Off Matter, it's Carl Off Matter, and he like freaked out about it? Well, I deleted that comment yesterday, and he came back today and left a comment that was actually pretty mild. It just went, oh, they're not selling Mark, then maybe there's no Markov Manor draft because the name's Karlov. And I might have thought that that was cute if I didn't already know that he was a fucking Mongo spaz, right? So the fact that I knew that made me go, ugh, and I just scrolled by it. And then I went, wait, wait, wait. I've mentioned this guy. I've mentioned this guy in a live stream. And now other people might say shit to him or whatever else. So, and also, you know what? That's enough to annoy. Fuck it. And I just, I'm like, he's gone. I just got rid of him. I am like, way faster to remove people who are being snarky about anything. Are you here to snark? You can do it in quiet. I don't need it. I don't fucking need it. I don't owe you anything. I didn't ask you to come here or any of it. So, you know, the more I do that, the less I will, the less time I'll spend thinking or talking about it, ultimately. Andrew G says, gotta be honest, if I see it in a live stream, great. If you say you did a live stream about it and I didn't see it, I'm out. That's fine. I don't care. I expect a lot of people will be like that. Bro, for the longest time, I didn't upload the live streams. I deleted them for years. The live stream archive exists because I finally gave in to the people who were asking for it. And I realized I've just been robbing them. I don't give a shit about anybody who doesn't want to watch the live stream afterwards. That's fine. The same way you don't want to watch the videos, whatever. Cool. Make your choice. Use your time wisely. But the people who do want to watch live streams afterwards, I want them to be there for them. And I'm going to make sure to trumpet it to everybody. So you're doing it the right way, Andrew G. Engage with what you like. Don't engage with what you don't like. And don't fucking complain about it. You've always been good times. So that's like the normal, well-adjusted approach that I give the double thumbs up to. Doomblade, what's up? What's up? That's right, Fixer. I'm snarky. This is my place. That's how it works. I would never go to somebody else's channel and go, oh, you can't act like that here, right? They get to do whatever they want. I get to be snarky. I also am entertaining and I fucking earned it, right? I'm doing things for people, providing shit for free every day. These people are taking from me and then demanding, right? What have they done for me? I count as a click. I don't need your click. I don't care. I'm not chasing clicks at all costs, am I? No. So if that's not it, then what are you giving me, bro? Right? If you cause me annoyance, go away, right? I'll probably just delete your comment. But if you do a good enough job or a repeat job, I will literally remove you. That's it. That's it. Everybody can choose to opt out. Everybody can choose to block my channel and never have to deal with me again. It's the same deal. Like, there's people who come by and like, hey, hey, but, and I'm like, well, why don't you just block the channel so you don't have to see it anymore? And they go, no, I want to tell everyone else how bad you are so they won't watch. And it's just like, click, click. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's this insane entitled mentality where, bro, I have the right to come right into your living room, tell everybody I hate you and they, they shouldn't be your friend. Well, actually, you don't at all at all so whoop right 
I don't know, man. I don't know. I will admit that I probably am more reactive in recent times because life's been heavy, man. Life's been heavy. And everyone's got stuff going on. And yet every fucking day I come back and live stream and make videos because I know people are having a fucking hard time. I'm here like every day doing shit for people. So I can't afford, I cannot afford to let anybody stick around who's going to be a fucking anchor on it in any way, bro. If you steal two minutes of my time, that's a fucking, that's a crime punishable by the infinite silence. That's it. That's it. You're free to come back and tell me to get fucked every day of the week. I'll never see it. We both win. We both win. <laughs> Levi says, sponsoring your next Thunder Junction adventure. Here's five singles for the girls on the pole. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Che cheers. Ralph, you thought the live streams were meant to pander just to you? You'd be surprised at how many people feel that way. Like, for real. It's crazy. It is It is pretty wild. And I am hopeful that one day, one day down the road, nothing, nothing will trigger me. But it's really annoying because I read people, like, I read all the comments. I read all the comments. I refuse to abdicate... Uh, my fucking, my comment section where the, you just like, don't read the comments. No, I will read the comments and I will fucking weave the garden. All right. <laughs> That's what I'll do. The reality is there's not that much negative. There's not that many people. That's why I don't have that many stories for that stuff. And a lot of the time it doesn't stick in my craw anymore. And I don't mention it to anybody. And there's lots of nice comments. Like some guy today was like, bro, you have nice hair. And it's like, Hey, thanks, man. That's nice. That's nice of you to say. But yeah, there's people who just go out of their way to be plugs and it's like you're probably hurting in life right now but that's not my fucking problem or my responsibility i already tried to give you something like before i'd be like i want to give people space i don't want to treat them like that because maybe they're having a hard time or whatever but by me making videos and live streaming stuff that's already me trying to help you escape from the problems in your life with a little bit of distraction talking about our shared hobby or some crack jokes and if that's not good enough for you cool and the sentence that's it i don't owe you anything ever right like for real i know the people who come to live streams like mr dj long hair two more for the pole girls i know you guys and i will miss you guys but a lot of the people who act up i don't even recognize their name i don't even recognize their name so it's like i don't know you i don't owe you that's the mantra son uh, why do i owe you something because you like the videos that i made or whatever right Doomblade, you like the proxies in the video? Uh, only thing you don't know. Oh, you don't have a playgroup. Can't help you with that, man. Unless you make proxy players, you know? Get some of those fucking um, European sex dolls with the big mamma jugs you can slap around, bro. And then you just be like, oh, whoever loses gets their face fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew G Super Chat says if one click is one one hundredth of a cent you can use this money to ban 999,000 clicks worth of hate viewers thanks buddy I want to go on the record very clearly here my friends that while I do talk about these negative comments for a number of reasons it's entertaining for you guys it's cathartic for me right like they are rare like 98 to 99 percent of my comments are neutral to positive and just about the video or whatever else is going on very few people actually act up and i do trim them out very rapidly now because it's just it doesn't make sense to do anything else because i will end up coming back to reading the comments later and i'll just get annoyed by something so if it annoys me once that's enough if the comment annoys me at all i just delete it now and if the person's a repeat jabberwocky or the comments really obnoxious, I just delete them, right? The people who are coming to tell me to like choke and die, those guys I get rid of immediately. It's crazy that people carry on that way. It's like, please do tell me what, what has happened in your life that you feel it's acceptable to tell people to die, bro. <laughs> like for real. I've never done anything to anybody on that level. And that is fucking wild. That is like beyond wild behavior. Oh, Ralph, your kids are sick. Well, just fucking put them in a sack. Take them down to the river. Be like, Daddy made weak children. Glub, glub, glub. Time to fucking do them like the mogs in the fucking mog death pit or whatever, right? 
where it's like, it's like, <laughs> chop them up and feed them to the new ones. Have some new babies and feed those old, weak kids to the new babies. Feed them to the new recruits. Put them in a sack. Drown them in the river. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. I don't know, man. I feel like I'm probably too negative. Let's be real. I feel like I've gotten to a place where I'm probably too negative too frequently. Especially in my fucking head. So I'm working on trying to be more positive about it. I'm trying to recognize that people are just fucking hurting and trying to get through their day and just go whatever man like click click and mute them but you don't need to feel anything about it. it doesn't need to be anything but i still have that desire to tell people what's what and go listen you absolute fuck stick how dare you talk to me like this this is ignorant as fuck man you should take a long hard look in the mirror because you're fucking pathetic right boy that's not a good look man yelling at people in the comment section it ain't a good look and having people dogpile shit makes me feel bad I don't like it. Like we had that stream X number of days ago where I started ranting at that one guy who came in. And then after I ranted him, other people started adding at him to go, hey, you still in here? And trying to keep it going. And that is the fucking worst. It's the worst. One of the things I fucking hate about YouTube is I can't just be myself anymore 100% because other people will act like shitty because I was shitty or whatever. And it's like, oh man, I don't want this. Like... Fuck, I just want to tell somebody they're a stupid fucking bleedy dick and to fall into a fucking pit of spikes and not have other people get in on it. But other people, like, that's unreasonable now. That That's not how it works. So, boo -hoo, hold on, let's, let me play the fucking, oh, the boo -hoo cry for the fucking, the, the tears of the YouTuber. Oh, -ho -ho. Why can't I just be a dick? <laughs> YouTubing's the new coal mine. My lungs. I can barely breathe. My lungs. Gianni, you've been reading a lot of stuff about stoicism and it helps keep your mind clear. It's good It's good to find things that help your mind. I have, um, I have that Mind Over Mood book that I got that has taught me some very useful stuff. This one right here, actually. I really, really like this because it's a... Uh, a scientific based approach to understanding your mentalities and controlling them and I'm still working on it I'm not where I want to be a hundred percent I would love to just not react when somebody's being whatever like I I genuinely dream of the day where I can just go huh when somebody's acting like that and not have a how fucking dare you you know but I guess part of it is that I don't know I guess I just put myself in other people's shoes or think about whatever else and it just go, I can't see how you get act acting like this. And then just, it annoys me that not just that they're doing it to me, but to like, they're just going to go around and do this to other people too. And whatever. I don't know, man, whatevs, whatevs. I'm a, I am a classic overthinker. It's part of what well, I got a great imagination and it works in a lot of ways, but it also can be really annoying. You know what I mean? What up, Energy Turtle? How you doing, buddy? Oh. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a process. It's not something that you can instantaneously do. And I'm a lot better than I used to be. I used to fight with people in the comments all the time, originally. And it was such a waste of time. So, I'm going to keep, I'm just... 
I don't respond to negative people anymore. That's the rule that I gave. It's like when people are here to be a dickhead, I don't respond to them. I understand that you can turn people's day around or they can go, I'm sorry for the way I behaved, but I'm not willing to give them the time or the effort. I don't care. Let somebody else fix your attitude around, right? I just, I don't owe people that. And it, and it just, it costs too much time and energy. And then a bunch of the people still end up flipping on you. You'll think, oh, cool. They've seen that acting like this isn't cool. But then two days later, they'll be acting like an idiot. They're completely unaware of how they act. Like there are people who see me in live streams on other channels. and like, hey, and I'm like, why are you fucking hating me, bro? Do you not know you're banned on my channel because I think you're an absolute plug? Like, bro, I remember your name. That's how much of a dumb, over-the-top dickhead you were. But I'll just go to somebody else's group and go, hey! And I was like, I'm not talking to you ever, bro. Like, you made such a negative impression that I'm glad you're banned, and it's crazy to me. Like, you literally told me I'm a fucking idiot who knows nothing about whatever on my channel. And now elsewhere, you're going to be like, hey, bro, what's up? And it's like... It's like running into people who were fucking bullies in high school. And they're like, hey, man, what's up at a party? And I'm just chill because I don't give a fuck. I ain't living in the past. But at the same time, there ain't no beef, but it ain't good between us. I don't give a fuck about you, bro. Just so you know, like for real, for real at all. So this all friendly smiles and shit. It's like, hey, and I'm just going to go and talk to other people. I won't be rude straight to your fucking face, even though you have it coming. Right. There was only one fucking bully who, <laughs> who he found out. But that's because he wanted to live in the past, man. He bullied me in fucking high school. He bullied me in high school. And then one day, we're just fucking hanging out. Like, he comes into the game store. He's getting back into magic or whatever. And he remembers the, like, the me who was afraid of getting hurt and who was a fucking pussy. Because I was a pussy when I was a kid, right? So... He starts doing this closed-eyed fucking roundhouse thing, right? Like, he thinks I'm going to flinch away from it. Meanwhile, I just put my hand straight in front of his fucking face with his eyes closed. And he opened his eyes just in time not to move his head straight into my fist. And then he saw my fist right in his face and went like... Like he blinked back. And I just looked at him and I said, yeah. And he just never fucking tried that shit again. It's like, bro, if you fucking think for a second that I'm going to let you fucking try and hit me or whatever... I'll put you on the fucking floor. Like, for real, what the fuck is this? Right? We're not fucking kids anymore. I'm an adult, and this is fucking pathetic. Like, the fact that you even did this is fucking pathetic. So, fuck you. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> there's only one guy who's been like that. The rest of them are like, hey! And I'm just like, I don't even care, man. We're at the same party, and I'm not going to be a dick at my friend's party to you. But, like, go fuck yourself, bro. If you were fucking laying on your side or whatever, it was like, oh, make sure you don't leave them on their back when they fucking had too much to drink. Fuck that guy. Stay on your back because you don't mean shit to me, right? That's it. I don't fucking care. That's not true. That's not true. That's me just fucking talking big for the internet. I couldn't leave somebody to fucking choke out on their own vomit just because I was fucking annoyed that they didn't acknowledge they were a dickhead in high school. That's not real. As soon as I said it, my brain was like, no, you wouldn't, bro. You would mutter. You'd be like, ah, come on, man. Come on. Maybe I'd take my fucking dick out, put it on his forehead, and take a picture. Right? There you go, bitch. There you go. Remember talking shit to me in high school? Because that's what the bullies did, most of them. I didn't, I never really got hit because I'd get, I'd get out of situations that might lead to that. But, like, for real, I wouldn't, I wouldn't let him choke out. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, one of your bullies is dead. Multiple of mine are dead, but I mean, that's just people I went to high school with and part of age and out. Like, so there's a bunch of people in different categories. And I mean, I was bullied a lot. I was small. And bullies are fucking dickheads who can sense people who are like afraid and easy to manipulate. And I was. I was when I was younger. Now, good fucking luck. Good fucking luck, man. <laughs> Sometimes I go into maniac mode and I'm worried about what I'm going to do to somebody. So, yeah. <laughs> but I advocate a path of not harming anybody if you can avoid it. Only harm people if it's required to protect you and your loved ones and to get out of a dangerous situation. And that's it. Right? And at the end of the day, you never know. Somebody 
who might have been a piece of garbage to you in high school or whatever else, can go on to be somebody meaningful in society who helps other people get through their lives. So it's not like that somebody's value is determined by uh, a one particular subset of actions, especially when they're not finished growing into a human. So it's like, we're never going to be friends, but I don't begrudge your existence, you know? I had, I had a guy who... Um, who like punched me in the stomach think I was going to come to his music show where it was just like hey man we're having a band playing whatever like this was when high school's over I'm like oh yeah and he's like we're having a show tonight that's you should come and I'm like oh yeah and he's like cool see you there and I'm like oh yeah and that's all I said the entire time I was like oh yeah and I was just like um what bro bro Go fuck yourself. Like, we're not friends. We're not friends. You were a dick to me in high school. I'm not coming to your stupid band show. You must be pretty desperate to get people out there. If you're just like, hey, this guy, like, what What do you, like, I don't even understand what goes through people's heads, man. I don't get it. I don't get it. I have a great memory for people. I went to chick with this, I, I went to school with this ugly chick. And, um, I remember because, like, I thought she was ugly, bro. I was like, yo, that, that chick is ugly. And her last, oh, I can't say the actual name. What are you doing, stupid? Okay, how do we say this? Um, her last name was like a musical instrument. It was really close to a musical instrument. So that's why I remembered. It would be the equivalent of if her last name was Atuba. And I thought of her last name as Atuba, right? Something like that. So... When we ran into each other at the grocery store like 15 years later and she like vaguely remembered me. She's like, we went to school, didn't we? And I'm like, we did. Here, this is your name. And then they were like, oh, wow. I'm so flattered that you remember me so well that you remember my name. And and like, she, and she's like, but I don't remember your name. And it was like this total like ego thing for her. And it was so funny to me because in my head, I'm like, I remember you because you have a ridiculous last name and you're ugly. So, but I'm not going to tell you that. I didn't tell her that. I let her think, like, she reacted like, oh, you're into me? I don't even remember you. That's how she acted. And I'm like, you were ugly when we were in high school and you were young. You're like a sea hag now. I'm not going to say that because that's really mean. But no, you have a goofy name and you're an Ugmo. And that's why I remember you. <laughs> Fixer, try and forgive people too. You don't like unforgiveness? Bro, there's very few people that I wouldn't forgive in terms of... It's like, I never want to talk to you or whatever, but I, I ain't actually holding a grudge. You'd have to do something real serious, I feel like. Because when you carry that around, it doesn't affect the other person. It just affects you. And the more people that you're bitter and miserable towards, the more it affects you, right? That's it. That's, how, that's ultimately how it ends up functioning. Seth, point him out. Nah, it's all right, man. Nobody nobody needs to be got. It's fine, man. Especially when it comes to stuff that happened when people are kids. Who cares, right? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I don't have any... I, like, I... Most of the... Most of the people who bullied me, I could probably barely pick them out from a lineup anymore. Maybe if you had an old school picture, I'd be able to, like, pick out a couple. The bullying was mostly weak sauce anyways. Purple! purple that was that that was me being that that's what these three guys in my class thought was bullying me because i mean bro i dressed in fucking almost all purple and bright yellow shirts like i wore the most insane fucking clothing big purple doc martens purple jeans purple button up over a blindingly yellow shirt that literally was like you need to turn that shirt off level of brightness so i looked fucking ridiculous I looked, but I would still dress like that. Fuck it, right? I don't care. <laughs> but yeah, I looked ridiculous. So these guys bullying me was going purple, purple, purple. But like at that point, I had already once once I got into like grade eleven and I was like six feet tall. The bullying got a lot less. We're gonna physically touch you and a lot more verbal. And if you think that I'm fucking weak enough that saying the color of the clothing I'm wearing bothers me, it doesn't. 
But there was this chick in the class that I totally did not know how to crush on me because I'm stupid. And when you're young, you don't understand the signals that women give. But she had a crush on me. She would come up. I'd be standing there and she'd just walk by and she'd like take my hood and push it to the back or whatever. Like these little signals that you don't understand when you're a young, dumb guy. But that combined with the whole, these guys are yelling purple. She just stands up and starts yelling at him. Stop it! Shut up! And I was just like, what the hell's going on? Another guy came out to me at the fountain and was just like, hey man, if you want to fight those guys, I got your back. And I just looked up at him like, because I was so confused. I was like, what? Fight them? What for? And it's like, for the bullying. I'm like, you mean them saying a, a color word at me, bro? No, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine. I'm fine. I didn't go home and cry about that, right? That did not embarrass me. What embarrassed me was tripping up the stairs in front of the two hottest chicks in school. Oh, yeah, no. Wow, even thinking about it, man. It's funny how much shit matters to you when you're a dumb teenager and none of it matters. It's all stupid high school shit. But, yeah, tripping up the tripping up the stairs in front of those girls. I want to die. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's how it felt. That's how it felt. And, bro, that chick who had a crush on me, I always thought, like, oh, yeah, she was kind of average looking compared to the, the hot girls in school. When I went back to the school reunion and I saw pictures of her, I was like, she's so pretty. Oh, my God, I could have dated this chick. What an idiot I was. Like, that is a genuine regret, man. She was a good person with a good heart. And I totally could have probably had a nice connection with her. I'm sure I would have fucked it up because I was young and dumb and whatevs, right? Got a lot to learn, but... Could have at least got a little bit of kissy kissy. Mew, mew, mew. I love your cute little face. Mew, 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 mew. <laughs> uh. Yeah, man. I was quick on my feet with talking smack with dudes and stuff. But in high school, man, are you kidding me? Chicks were like, this is when I, I had the, the same problem that a lot of guys do, where you're not doing women the service of treating them like actual humans. You're treating them like some kind of mystical creature you've got to obtain or some weird shit because you just don't understand and it makes you a fucking weirdo. So with dudes, I'm totally fine. With chicks, I was totally nervous, right? 100%. Was not good with the ladies when I was younger at all. Because the sense of humor that goes over well with men has to be fine-tuned for the women, right? It definitely does. You don't use the same one with both of them. Jess, did someone ask you if you were the Christmas tree that fell down the stairs? You're like, no, I'm the Christmas tree who fell up the stairs. So yeah, man, I, I like, I don't know, I don't know where like my bullies and stuff ended up because they didn't leave like a long lasting imprint on my existence. They were just an annoyance that I had to deal with when I was in school. You know, it was more, it was more of a thing when I was younger and smaller. And then when I got to a certain size, there was fewer situations where it was going to get into a, an actual altercation. I got into so many fights just by asking people why they wanted to fight me. That was an incredibly effective technique to stop fights from happening. I'd bump into some dickhead or whatever, something would happen, or I didn't let somebody cut to the front of the line, and they'd be, we're fighting after school, blah, blah, blah. And, like, I would just be like, oh, this is no good. I don't want to fight this person, and I can't get this off my brain, and I don't understand why they want to fight me. So I'm going to go up to them and ask them to explain why they want to fight me. And nobody that I ever asked to explain why they wanted to fight me would fight me after that. They would just go, I don't want to fight you. We're not fighting. Shut up. But it was like, if I hadn't said that, the fight would have happened. I watched lots of fights happen. But they all just got diffused by me going, why do you want to fight me? And they were just like, it was like, it was almost like a move that's against the rules. Bro, you're not allowed to say that. I don't know what I'm supposed to say now. So I just want out of this. That's how they reacted. It was so weird, but it worked. I would just come up and ask them, why do you want to fight me? And they're just like, I can't believe how well it worked. <laughs> it's funny.
disappointing, man. All the dumb stuff you care about as a kid. Dragon Raider, what's up? You saw the proxy video? It's true about the quality of magic cards. <sighs> Truth hurts, right, Lizzo? Right, right. What a universe, man. Yeah, I definitely like live streams. I appreciate the ability to meander to whatever subject I want, yammer about my past, complain about people in the comments, whatever else, because it's an opt-in experience. It doesn't matter. I don't make anybody watch this shit. These live streams are specifically for people who actively want to watch them. Anybody who doesn't actively want to watch it, it's not for you, so there's no worries. It's perfect. It's perfect. Man, those memories. I got a little purple Necron shiny thing. Maybe this is partially where the spark... Yep, this is where the spark these came from. You got these little things that I've never really found a good use for. And then they got more little Necron cardboard circles. Oh, and the life spinner. I forgot about that. Jess, you once had a dude punch you in the back of the head because he heard that you thought you could take him in a fight. You got kicked out of school and you didn't. Well, I mean, if he did it something and you were just standing there, then obviously he's going to be the one to get it. Yeah, surprisingly little happened. Most of the time, the bullying was just me being worried about something happening and it, most of the time it never coming to fruition. It's not... Not too, actually, the one time where it would have been bad for me, I luck sacked out. The universe saved me. I was in the like boys' locker room. I hated, I hated that, man. I hated that place. The fucking boys' gym locker room or whatever. That place is a nightmare zone that you have to fucking get out. You got to get out of there 100%. Because you're in trouble otherwise. And I remember like the biggest guys all rounding on me and I'm like oh I'm fucked man I'm fucked and then the door opened and <laughs> and the universe op offered up a sacrificial victim and being the cowardly bastard I was at the time I took that window I pointed at the guy who just opened the door and was like look who's here somebody who's lower on the social totem pole than me right basically so they got him so bad they gave him a wedgie that was so bad, he couldn't walk right. And, like, I felt bad, but also good that it wasn't me. Do you know what I mean? Like, totally, totally. Sorry about your luck, bro. As soon as he came in, I'm like, look who it is. They looked, and I fucking got out the door. Like, bro, if you don't have the survival instincts to turn the fuck around and get out of this room instantly, there's nothing I can do for you. I'm on the fucking move, right? <laughs> I should have just started fucking licking them. That's what you should do, man. They come up and grab you, start fucking licking them and shit. I'm gonna make this real fucking weird, bro. I'm gonna fucking lick you and grab your dick. How about that? How about that? I'm gonna fucking grab. I'm gonna grab your junk, bro, but not in a way to hurt you. Like in a, I'm gonna look you right in the eyes and grab your fucking dick. Are we doing this? Just like, that's it. That's what I should have done. I should have fucking understood that if I lean into being fucking weird, that it would have worked better, right? Just be like, let's go. Kiss me on the mouth before you punch me, daddy. <laughs> My buddy bit a guy in the dick. He bit a guy in the dick. Uh, the guy had his fucking BMX bike or whatever up above his head. And he was like, gonna, I'm going to smash your bike. So he fucking bit his dick. He's like, gah, right through his fucking pants, man. But he dropped the bike. What the fuck? <laughs> oh. Speedwagon, a guy once tried to steal your Big Mac at lunch in high school, so you spit on your burger before he could take it. There you go. <laughs> man, oh man.
Yeah. I feel like that would have totally worked, man. If I just acted like fucking, yo, I'm gonna grab your junk, buddy. Yo, bro, I love the way your fucking balls feel. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. <sighs> Juglum, you got into a lot of fights. Oh, big ear. Yo, Redhead, actually, my, my best friend got into a bunch of fights, too. He was a Redhead. I, I remember specifically the most satisfying the most satisfying thing i ever saw in my young life was remember that guy i told you about who did the like fucking oh i'm gonna kick you and then i had my fist in his face well back when i was afraid of that guy he had spread a rumor about my buddy. <laughs> he had spread a rumor about my buddy in junior high it's so stupid it's so stupid they said that he had the siamese fizz disease and that <laughs> he had the Siamese fizz disease and that that made him into dudes. That was the rumor that they made up in like grade six or grade seven about him. And it like my buddy had to deal with that for at least a year or whatever. So like the first day of high school, the first day of high school, we're walking in. Right. And the one guy, he goes, he says Siamese fizz or whatever to my friend. He just he says Siamese fizz. And. <laughs> That's all he said before my buddy just casually... I thought he was just going to reach out and put his hand around his shoulder. But he went like this around his neck. He just grabbed him around the neck. And then he fell directly on top of him on concrete stairs. And slammed his head into the stair. And then just slid his arm out. Stood up. And left him laying on the stairs. And he just calmly said, I think that's the last we'll be hearing of that. And he was sure right. That was never brought up again. He fucking dummied him so hard. And that kid had it coming, right? And considering that I was afraid of him at the time, I found that extra satisfying. Like, extra satisfying. My best friend wasn't a pussy like me. He was brave. And I was a scared little bitch. <laughs> Siamese fizz. <laughs> what the fuck? What a universe. That's funny, man. <laughs> so silly. Oh, well. That's fine. <clears throat> High school was a trip. I was totally in the fucking nerd category, playing Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons and shit, all that, right? Had no interest in sports. None of that. None of that. But yeah, man. He's a good fucking friend. He saved my life multiple times. He saved me when I was drowning in the ocean. He pulled me out of the way of a fucking truck that was about to hit me. Like, he's literally saved my life a number of times. Dominic says, I'm your best friend now. Uh... No. <laughs> no. You, I ain't being best friends with anybody who's got a fucking prison. All right? You got your own prison. Fixer, your nickname was Krispy Kreme in high school? Damn, man. You must have been plowed by a lot of fucking dudes to be called a cream-filled donut, huh? Why are you saying get him? He's saying he's my best friend. Why are you saying get him? Do we, what does best friend mean to you? What does best friend mean to you? Yay. He's a good friend. The only thing... The only thing that can come between two friends, sometimes, is a lady, right? So, there there may have been a point where I was angry at him for talking to a chick that I was into or whatever. <laughs> Break stop, a-holes, called you Double D because you played Dungeons and Dragons. I had a girl who thought I was a devil worshiper. She's like, do you worship the devil because you play d and I'm like, yep, but well, we're not playing this. We're throwing babies in dumpsters. She's like, oh, 
fucking dumbass. Oh, God, she was so cute, though. She was so cute. She had such beautiful fucking silky hair. Oh, I had such a crush on her. Like, such a crush on her. I thought she was so cute. Sucks that she was dumb. And she walked like she had a fucking pair of balls on her, bro. She walked like a fucking dog that's got, like, shoes on. You know what I mean? Do you know when, like, a fucking one of dogs walking? Like, you put the dog's fucking shoes on and it's walking. And it walks like this, like... Like, she walked like that, man. I swear to fucking God, I can, I can, like, not that exaggerated, right? But she walked, like, she walked like she's got a pair of, like, a ball bag on her. I bet she didn't, though. I bet she didn't have one of those, that little fucking cutie. <laughs> Fixer, your wife's mom threw away her magic cards because she thought they were demonic. Yeah, a bunch of people had to deal with that, which is fucking hilarious to me. I'm almost surprised that didn't happen to my buddy because his mom was a fucking religious nut bar. <laughs> like, like that poor bastard. Instead of getting like proper Nintendo games, she got him the fucking <laughs> those goofy ass religious Nintendo games like fucking Noah's Ark and shit. He had a board game that was literally just like homework. Like you wanted the game by doing geography and math homework. It had little little fucking textbooks and shit like for real she got the most he got the most dog shit toys because his mom was like bro i got side news for you mom everything's part of god's plan so you know what we can totally play contra it's okay to play contra god created contra for us to fucking for us to shoot people in this game okay let us play double dragon you bitch we don't need to play noah's dick bag adventure you fuck Nathan, your colleague posted an Instagram story yesterday saying D&D for the next four days, please. And I was about to text asking when and where she played and then realized she meant do not disturb. <laughs> I didn't get that either. I totally thought D&D as well. That's funny. Yo, uh, do not disturb. So where's this four day action going on? I'm in. Uh, HR? HR, this man is sending me very molesty messages. <laughs> A book, yeah, Contra's good times, bro. Pierce, your wife wanted to toss all your stuff until you showed her how much it's all worth. Now it's kept out of her sight. Your wife just throws stuff away. I would lose it. If Carly just threw my shit away, I would be pissed bro like she wouldn't because she knows how i am but like just a quick like what she'll do maybe she'll be like hey is this stuff you want or whatever because that's totally normal but just throwing something out what no don't throw my shit out <laughs> fixer super nintendo your dad gave you one nice nice i have lots of great memories from the super nintendo era too i remember randomly being given Mega Man X for the Super Nintendo as like a birthday gift. And I wasn't happy because I didn't care about Mega Man games. I liked like RPGs. So I was like, what is this? Turns out I didn't realize I had a masterpiece in my hand. Mega Man X, fucking incredible. Game's awesome. So yeah, I played it so much, so much. Joe gets it. That's exactly how it works, buddy. Nathan, you're going to have to totally update her mental model of who she was. Yeah, it's like, what kind of barbarian are you playing? I said, do not disturb. What's your problem? Leave me alone. <laughs> What's your thought, oh lady? Your mom had poke Pokemon cards being from the devil? How can you think those are from the devil? Pokemon cards are so stupid. I'd get it with magic cards where it's like you're literally doing fucking sorceries and shit and you've got like oh look at demonic hordes and unholy strength and like demonic tutor literally learning from demons with pentagrams in their heads oh my god Yu-Gi-Oh's stupid weeb crap right who's gonna think that's from the devil they'll be like the worst thing that Yu-Gi-Oh cards are gonna do is make you fucking completely unfuckable right that's that's what Yu-Gi-Oh does it makes you completely undesirable as a human being that's the game where they have to put in the rules that you have to bathe. That's the only card game on earth that has the rules. You got to bathe to play it. Because Yu-Gi-Oh players are so universally fucking disgusting that they need that encoded 
in their rules, right? Of course magic's going to seem like fucking demon worshipping and shit. And earth buying. It's like, you're tying down fairies to fuck them? What? You're summoning up devils and fucking fairies, Billy? Not on my watch. But Pokemon? This Florpadorp is down. That's a doorknob spirit, Mom. You're not putting the devil's doorknob in your butt, Billy. <laughs> I'm going to save your butt from Satan. Sodomy is... You might... You might... I heard that you curl these cards up and stick them up your tuckus, Billy. Let Mama check your butthole. Lay down on the bed and spread your cheeks, Billy. Pretend like Mom's putting a suppository in. <laughs> Dominic, you agree about Yu-Gi-Oh? The fact that they have to put it in the fucking rules, bro. Like, magic players stink. Magic players fucking stink, man. Not all of them, but enough of them. But there's never been... It's not gotten to the point where, like, we have to enshrine it in the rules. Yu-Gi-Oh! It's like, let us let us show you a new level of funk. <laughs> Fixers! My wife won't go to the card shop. She says it smells like butt crack there. <laughs> She's right. You know what, too? Women have... A better sense of taste and a better sense of smell than men. That's that's a fucking fact. So they can fucking they can smell it, bro. They can smell the stink of unwashed dudes, right? And they can probably like a bloodhound tell you which one's beat off before they show up. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> Yeah, uh, like, uh, there were some events that I ran where I was just like, you go up to the front of the store, and then you go to the back, and you're like, bro, the stink is physical. Like, it's like a fucking miasma you can feel in the air. You ever watch somebody go through, like, a fucking portal in a movie or something, and there's that little bit of resistance as the surface ripples when you enter it? I have entered man stink of that fucking level where it's like, Jesus, turn the fucking fans on and crack the back door. This is like a stink. Dink hot box, man. What the fuck? Every time you ask you to go with you, yeah, why would she want to go, bro? Why would she want to go to a place that stinks? What's it's not like if you go to like a horse show, at least you get to see the horses prancing around in exchange for the smell of horse shit. But you're gonna, it's gonna smell like dirty horses at the game store, and there's nothing there for you, right? So your wife knows what's up, man. She knows what's up. They started selling concessions at my LGS deodorant should be one of them. Look, think about this for a second, Ray's. Do you think that the reason that they don't have deodorant on is because they just don't own any and they would somehow buy it there? The people who stink have no I fucking idea they stink. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh. Uh, yeah, Fixer, bro, I'm the same way. Like, if I smell like somebody who stinks or whatever, the first thing is like, that's not me, is it? Oh my God, that smell I'm smelling isn't me. I got to locate this. And I'm like, it's, it can't be me because I shower like every fucking day pretty much. So I don't think I took a dip in dipshit pond lately. So I don't know what the fuck's going on. But there's always that part of you like, like, I remember when I was a teenager and I would like, I ran to the game store once and then I realized when I got there, I was like, oh my God, I stink. This is terrible. So for me, it's mortifying. I can't, if I think I stink, I can't be comfortable where I'm at. I don't want to be around people because I don't want them to fucking smell me. That's disgusting. It's fucking gross, bro. Multiple Febreze comments. Yep, I fucking I've seen I've seen a room full of gamers get Febreze drive by Febrezing. It's crazy. I worked with a guy at work. They they told him he had to fucking bathe. It's like you stink. You have to bathe. You can't be here at work smelling like that. How fucking embarrassing is that? How embarrassing is it to be told as an adult, like as an adult, that you stink? Like that's crazy, man. That's crazy.
I doubt that there. I, actually, I've heard that some LGSs keep some of that kind of crap just in the bathroom so that people can use it. So they might have some Axe spray or something in the bathroom. Noob says to tell if your breath stinks, you have to lick the back of your hand and smell it. Nah, I just fucking cough a bunch of fucking phlegm into my hand and then I fucking rub it up my nose like that going <sighs> because and then when they look at me going, sorry, man, I don't, I just I think it might be gross if I smell. So I just bang a fucking line of my own phlegm straight up my nose. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's fucking gross, man. And I've been to enough game stores where it's the fuck. Like, the only ones that seem to not be like that. Like, the big. You go up to 401 Games when I was there. That place didn't fucking stink. It's just like, okay, this just seems like, like a normal business. People playing cards or whatever, but you don't walk in and go, oh, right? And there's like, uh, you know, just a bunch of people wandering around buying games and stuff, board games and stuff. And it's not all just dudes. I guess, I guess it's the more hole in a wall the game store is, the more likely you are to have that fucking wave of stink. Jack, listen, man, if you haven't had that experience, count yourself lucky. Count yourself lucky. Because, I mean, it's... I went to church tournaments back in the day when Wizards was first figuring out where they're going to hold bigger events, and, like, the smell of people is just unpleasant. It's just unpleasant. It's less gross to walk into medieval times and smell the horse crap than it is to smell people. Zeria, you were at a pre-release. Someone reeked and it was the Yu-Gi-Oh! player that had just converted. <laughs> Yugi, oh no. Ugh. Yugi, B-O. <laughs> Yugi, B-O. That's so stupid. That's so stupid, but I love it. <laughs> oh. What a world. What a world. Yeah, man, I wish I could say I'd never been to game stores like that, but most of the game stores I've been to, just people are fucking gross. But I'll just tell somebody if they stink. I don't give a fuck, man. I'll just tell you. But bro, you smell. You got to do something about it. <laughs> just so you know. If I can tell who it is, I'll just be like, yo, if it's a breath, I'm like, here's a fucking mint, bro. No, I don't. No, you don't seem to understand. I'm not offering you this out of friendship. I'm fucking saving all of us. Your, you, your mouth smells like shit. Fucking have this mint. Fuck off. Like, for real. You don't get to talk unless you have this fucking mint. Because I ain't having this. I am not fucking having it. You are not talking to me smelling like you've just been eating cow shit all day. Let me tell you all about it. You can tell me about it from across the fucking room. How about that? <laughs> what up, Lynx? How's it going? Dominic says it's definitely more common at small card and comic shops. Yep. Fix, you, you don't understand how they can be so lacking in self-awareness to have that issue? Whatever smells are like most prevalent in your location, your brain will tune out. So what happens is their brain tunes out the stink because it's not useful information. They've just acclimatized to it. So they, their brain doesn't pick it up. It's like a constant droning in the background. At first you're going to hear it, but at a certain point, it's still there, but you don't hear it anymore because your brain has filtered it out. It's useless information. Same thing applies to stinks. It's wild, but that's how it works. There are some people who stink so bad, their entire, like, their entire living quarters has that. So it's in everything, and that's their whole essence. So they can't even tell. It's crazy. Beefquake spotted some more artwork that you think needs a second look. Well, if you found if you found something, if you found the artwork you think it comes from and the card, yeah, pop it into my Discord. I'll take a look at it. I'll take a look at it and uh, and see what I think. Dominic says the owners also allow the behavior because they need a player base. It is, I guess you know what. I never really thought about it, but yeah, the people who are running the shop aren't. I'm, I, I assume. Either they're not bothered by it and don't notice it, or like you said, it's for the money. Uh, 
buy a box, get a free shower. The hose is out back. That's funny. Oh, man. Oh, oh. Oh, all right. Well, yeah. It's been fun. Thanks for coming and hanging out. It looks like Gianna, the baller, you are Lord of the Board for the end of the stream. So you will be immortalized on this art card, which will be placed into the Box of Glory. Congratulations. All right, my friends, that means it's time for me to die.